Hello guys, I'm back. My name is Jefferson Costa and I'm just preparing the sharing of the links. So I just need to share in the LinkedIn. Today I will I will do a, a I will answer a question that I received in LinkedIn and I will also use the Aspen High Seas uh, on live and I will share with you some, some, some tips and some uh, options that we have in the Aspen High Seas to do to support the answers that I will, that, that I will answer, okay? Okay, the links were shared and we are on time, so I will not wait too much. Let me be a little bit smaller. And I will use the, the notes as support to, to what I will sh show. Share with you. So, the welcome. My name is Jefferson Costa. I'm a chemical process engineer with expertise in plant design. And it is my live session every Wednesday. I am in the internet in my YouTube channel to, to share with you a live session. And it can be something related strictly to my work as a process engineer or something related to chemical process engineering and plant design. And for instance, today I will uh, talk about a question that I received in LinkedIn. I encourage you to send me questions and the LinkedIn, my LinkedIn is the, the best platform because it is uh, the one that I review every day. Uh, in the end of the, the day, I take a look at my LinkedIn but I must uh, alert you that if you need quick response, uh, I cannot guarantee that to you because I have a lot of, a lot of things to, to worry about and sometimes people need to remind me about the question because uh, sometimes I want to answer, but I, I forget, I get other, other things to do. And if your question is interesting, um, I have two, kind, uh, two main options to answer them that if it takes more than three lines to, to be answered. And uh, I consider that because the typing in, in LinkedIn or typing is very time consuming to me. So I prefer first to record a, an audio. And I, if I do that, I will share the response, my answer. I will share my, my answer in my Telegram channel in process and you can get the link in my website. And if you don't know that, let me see here. And the, my Telegram channel is available, the link is available in the description of this video, but if you want to go to my website, you can get my Telegram channel link and download also the software in the, directly from my website, okay? No problem. And I, let me see if I am able to share with you. Let me be a little
here is my telegram channel and if you go in in files and if you if you go in voices you can see that i have a lot of voices already recorded uh, answering questions and the we are going to to complete one year of existence in the next month so i have uh, a lot of sharing my i have shared my experience in linkedin every time and usually i record audios there and i share content so i encourage you if you are interested in chemical process engineering plan design i invite you and i encourage you to get a look on that so my first option is to do is to record audio because it is easier uh, because i practice my english that is not the the best english in the world I am Brazilian. I'm from Brazil, so my 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 mother my mother language is Portuguese, and I I think better. And if I need to correct anything, I just do during the the talking. So it's easier to me to share my my experience to with you in my Telegram channel and recording audio. However, depending on the topic. I consider doing a video to my YouTube channel and so it's what I'm, I will do and what I'm doing right now and in this way I can also talk to you and I previously I tried to record uh, videos but in, with time I observed that I get more comfortable doing live sessions because if I do something wrong I can correct with you and if I record, it's very, very time consuming. And I just record videos now to the to the my training program in process. And because there I need to, to be more strict to the point with my students. But to share my my experience and to to be able to talk to you, I, I always like to know where are you from. So please you can use the chat and this way i it's the main the main options that i have to share my experience eventually i will type to you but i will always prefer to to use the media that can help more people so if you send me a question and i i will i don't answer that uh, too fast to you excuse me remind me and if it, uh, the, the question is, is a nice question, I will answer an audio, I will do a video, but in any case, I will do my best to always give you an answer. And the, today I have a reminder, reminder here to help me with the live session. And of course, we start the, the live session and I'm not seeing anything in the chat please let me know where are you from and because i am from brazil and every saturday i i do an interview with another chemical process engineer around the world so i received people from india from mexico from france from usa and it is very nice and very interesting to know uh, how how long uh, how far we we help people in the internet and it's very very nice to to build a strong community of chemical process engineers around the world so the subject of this live session as i told you before is to answer a question i i receive it in linkedin and also i will show you my ice high cs v11 and i will use that to share some features that ice high cs have so i will copy that it will be easier so
the main purpose of the live session today is to answer a question that I received and to use the ISPN high seas. And today what I will share with you is how to add pure components in the ISPN high seas. That is, if you already uh, have any experience with the ISPN high seas, you know that is very easy. But there are people that don't know from where to start with and how to add hypothetical I think it's not correct, but okay, if what then I think uh, I'm not so sure if it's correct, but okay, so let's see how to add hypothetical components to to the process simulation. I will show you how to add the show table or how to to activate the show table and let's see how to configure configure that, how to add more information to the show table, how to remove uh, information from, from the show table, and how to add notes. And most of it, I uh, almost all of it is available in my training course, and here we will see live, and if you have any question, feel free to share with me. So to start with the question. The question, okay. So to start with the question, The question that I received, it was from Somia Hanjam. Uh, he he's works with uh, production in a, in a SMR, and SMR is steam methane reformer, so he works in a hydrogen plant, and he has a, a question related to the using of naphtha as fuel for firing purpose. And his question was, what is what's its density relation with HHV, and we'll see what is HHV, whether it's beneficial or not taking hydrogen production as reference, and whether steam requirement for heating naphtha will be more or less based on naphtha density. So let's uh, answer some of these questions, and to begin with, we need to, to know what is naphtha. So to start with, let's go to the Wikipedia, and naphtha is a, a mix of hydrocarbons, and it doesn't have a specific composition, but it has a, a cut of distillation. So if we get the if we get the Wikipedia definition. Naphtha is a flammable liquid hydro, hydrocarbon mixture, help it a lot. But what matters here, here for me is to share with you that we have uh, some definitions related to light naphtha and to heavy naphtha, and that uh, influences the density, the mass density of the components, and with that we will able to answer the, the question. So, the the light naphtha is the fraction boiling between 30 Celsius degree and 90 Celsius degree and consists of molecules with 5 to 6 carbon atoms and the heavy naphtha boils between 90 Celsius and 200 Celsius and consists of molecules with 6 to 12 carbon atoms. So what I will do now is to add this information to the Iceman High Seas in, in order that we can start to uh, evaluate uh, how to answer the question that Sumia asked to me. Hello, Luis. How are you doing? Peru is a very, very nice place. I started the CO2 plant in Repsol Lapampilla refinery and it has around 5 
three years, I think so, three years. So guys, I am in my Aspen High C simulation and I will do two, I will add two kinds of components to my process simulation. The first one is the per components and I will do uh, after that the hypothetical components. And to start with the per components, we have seen in the, in the light and after description that we have molecules with five to six carbon atoms. So uh, I, I can, for instance, let's go to poor components. And if I have five to six, I can choose the I-pentane, the N-pentane, and n -xane. So I have the five to six molecules so it is my component list two. But I and let's add also the and the heavy nafta boils of 90 to 200 and have has 6 to 2 to 12. So let's add that also. So I have the 6 up to 12. And with this, I am able to, to simulate a, a light nafta a a stream and a heavy nafta stream. But let's suppose that I don't want to add the poor components because uh, for any reason, I don't know the concentration of each component, so it doesn't matter to, to me. What I can do is return it to the component list and I will add another component list. And now, instead of adding uh, a pair component, and I could do this, this procedure, I could do in the component list one, okay? But I'm doing in a separate component list, so only to be easier to understand. So now, I will, instead of using pair components, I will choose hypothetical, uh, hypothetical, and now let's return to the NAFTA definition. The light NAFTA definition is 30 Celsius degree to 90 Celsius degree of fractioning boiling point. So what I will do here is initial boiling point 30 and final boiling point 90. And if I click on, and the interval I will let as 10 Celsius degree. So if I click on generate hypos, I have a list of components and I'll click, I will add everyone to my component list. And with this, I can also simulate a light nafta, uh, light nafta stream. And I will add another component list. And this time I will use the hypothetical also again, but now to simulate or to have components to simulate the have NAFTA. And it goes from 90 Celsius degree to 200. So let's return there. And now I use from 90 to 200. And if I click in generate IPOs, I have a list of components again, and I can add everyone to that. And uh, I have here in my process simulation, I have a fluid package, just one, and I need to address the fluid package to a component list. So what I have here right now is that my fluid package one, it is a Peng Robson, it is associated to the component list two. Uh, I will just uh, associate to component, component list one, and I will add more component lists to have a component list to each uh, 
I will add more fluid package, sorry, to, to be associated with the component list. So when I add another fluid package, I can associate that with other component list and I will add another Okay, I need to choose the, the fluid package and just add another one. So it's okay. We have added the different component lists and we have added different fluid package. And it is very useful when you are uh, handling or using uh, different uh, uh, streams or components that doesn't are compatible one with another or when you have a fluid package that fits better to a component than to others. For instance, the Peng Robinson is very useful when you are talking about uh, hydrocarbons but if you are using steam to do the heating or to do the cooling of something, the ASME, ASME, steam, the ASME steam fits better to the results related to the, the water for, for sure. So you can use that, you can use one, uh, more than one fluid package in your, in your process simulation. And when you change the fluid package, you can also use more than one component list. So let's go to the process simulation. And now I will add uh, a stream to simulate the NAFTA. So when I click two times, I can name the, the stream. So let's call this light NAFTA. And you can see that it starts with the fluid package basis one and the components that will be that have been loaded to my process simulation is those one related to component one. Let's verify. And you can see here that it is related to my light NAFTA. If I change the the fluid package, let's see the two. My components also changes. And if I change to fluid package three, it changes again, okay? So each, uh, what I have done was to associate one fluid package to a list of components. And of course, I can associate a fluid, a different fluid package to the same flu, uh, to the same list of components. That's that's not a problem. Of course, that it depends the, of the compatibility of the components and the fluid package. So now, what I want to simulate is a light NAFTA composition or stream. So. What I will do first, I will start with the pure components. And I, I just want to, to give a handle, uh, a handle composition. So I will use normal, normalize, yes. Mm. Okay, and the sum must, the total must be one always. If it is above one or below one, when I click in OK, the Aspen High Seed will equalize that and you must verify if the compositions that you're looking for is correct. And I will consider some process conditions. And with that, we can see, we can see that the NAFTA at the atmospheric conditions and 
in the ambient temperature around 25 Celsius, it is a uh, liquid. It is in the liquid phase because we have vapor phase or uh, phase fraction as zero. And it means that we have liquids uh, in our stream. And now we have the light nafta. I will add another light nafta here. just for comparison. But now instead of using the pure components, I will use the, the boiling, boiling cut. I'll use the same process conditions. It is also liquid. And just to finish this part of the presentation, I will add the have nafta. And I'm doing the light nafta and the half nafta because we want to evaluate what uh, changes when we do that, okay? So we can see that the heavy nafta also is liquid at the around 25 Celsius, so it's okay. We have the three components and, and, and I, as I have told you, the nafta is a, a cut of the crude oil, so when we we get the petroleum from the platform and transfer that to the refinery. One of the first steps is to do the distillation of the petroleum and each uh, range of temperature will produce a range of, of products and the nafta is around here. So you can see that from the top to the bottom, we have the lighter to the have they have uh, products. So the nafta is more lighter, uh, it's a more lighter product than a heavier product. Okay, so we have seen how to add pure components, we have seen how to add hypothetical components, and I'm using my, my my sheet chat here. Now let's see how to add the show table. Because instead of every time that I need to see information, let's uh, sometimes I have a very big process simulation. And uh, instead of each time that I need to see information, I do a double click. For instance, I want to remember or I want to remember what is the, the temperature. I want to verify the properties, I want to see the composition. Instead of doing double click in the material string every time that I want that, or in the, the, the energy stream every time that I want that, you can do is click one time in the stream and it can be the material or it can be the energy stream and with the, the right bottom of your mouse, you open this submenu, and in the submenu, you have some options here, and what I want to show you 
is the show table. So if I click in the show table as per standard, it will show you a table with the temperature, the pressure, and the molar flow. And in this case, it gets easy to you to verify some, some information. For instance, uh, if I, I add a, a control valve here and a pressure drop, so every time that I change the upstream, the downstream will change also. And if I have a table, it is easier and and it is easy for me to verify the changes in my process simulation. So many times in, in specific or in strategic uh, streams, I use this, this table to let my life easier. And instead of adding the workbook to the process because I will have a lot of information, so I can have specific information if I use the show table. Just a moment. Okay, so I will do this with the three with the three streams. Because I want to compare them to evaluate the mass density in what is the relation of the mass density with some properties. Okay, so the, the first question that I received was what is the density or the mass density relation with HHV? And before proceeding, adding the HHV to our process simulation, let's verify what is HHV. And the HHV is, is related to the heat of combustion. And the heating value is the amount of heat released during the combustion of a specific amount of heat. So we have the heat value, and the heat value is divided in two, in two categories. The high heat value, that is the HHV, and the low heat value, that is the LHV. And the difference, the difference between them, I will not get deeper on that, but the difference is that the, when we do the combustion of a hydrocarbon, you, you need uh, air to do that, and you will form, if it is a complete combustion, you will form CO2 and water, or if it's not completed, you will form CO and water, and the, the energy used to vaporize the water, uh, it is considered in the LHV, and the HHV, it's not considered, it uh, gets, it's considered that the water is at its liquid state, so uh, it is as if the uh, heat needed to, to vaporize the water was not used. In the LHV, the heat used to vaporize the water is sub, sub, subtracted from the HHV. There is a uh, equation here, so you can see that the common method to, to of relating HHV to LHV is this. So based on that, we'll, we'll, we'll evaluate now in the Iceman High Seas what happens once we increase the mass density of the, the fluid or of our stream and see if the HHV will increase or if it will decrease. Just to give you a spoiler, as the heat value is the amount of heat released during the combustion, we can expect that once we increase the mass density, it means that we have more molecules 
and it means that we have more mass in the same uh, cubic meter or uh, in the same volume of the, the component. So it is expected to have more heat value because we have more energy to, to be released. And we'll see now if we can confirm this hypothesis in the Iceman High Seas. So instead of, as I told you, instead of doing double clicking and verifying the properties and of each one of the, the components, what I can do is do a double click on the table and I can add a variable. When I do that, I can, uh, it will have a list of variables to me and I can choose the high heat value. So it is in alphabetic. So I have high, higher heat value. I click one time on that, click in the arrow. So it was chosen. If I click on done, it was added to my table. And now I can see the high heat value in strafe in my process simulation. And I will do that the same with the others. The high heat value was not loaded. Okay, so what I will do right now to save time, I will add a half nafta with the per components and I will verify that later. Uh, and I just verify that I considered Let me fix this one.
Okay, so we have the light nafta and the heavy nafta, and uh, you can see. Let me add the mass density also because I forgot about that. Okay, as expected, the mass density of the light nafta is lower than the mass density of the heavy nafta. And as we increase the mass density, we increase the energy per kilomole of, of, comp of, of component of the stream. So you can see that the heavy nafta, the energy per, per kilomole is higher than in the light nafta. So with this we cover the light nafta and the high nafta and the ISPEN certification video will be available in I will talk to to Aka Tweedy on let me see here. On October 26th, in October 26th, I will be here with Aka Tweedy to talk about the iceberg certification, and he will share with you, you and with us uh, how you can get the iceberg certification, okay? So now, the the question was the question let's return to the question so what is the density relation with the high heat value when we increase the mass density we increase the high heat value because we have more energy available so this is one of the the answers of the live today and we and he asked me about the density and the air consumption once if you consider that you you burn the same amount of nafta and if it's light or heavier and once you have more hydrocarbons uh, and if you, you have more hydrogen to the stream you need to increase the amount of oxygen and with that you your one as you increase the the mass density of the, your fuel you need more air to to do the burning so this is the relationship and another relationship that he asked for was about the density and the steam consumption. And to, to show you this one, I will add a heater. I will add a heater to the, to the process simulation. And we will see as if we because to, to use the nafta as a fuel we need to vaporize that we don't use in, we don't heat the the liquid we heat the the gas that goes to the burner and to do that we need a source of vaporization and it it most often we can use the steam to do that so i will sim, i will use the heater to simulate the vaporization of the nafta and we'll see which one of them will have more energy associated and the one that has uh, the higher energy associated will use the will use more steam considering the semi steam conditions pressure temperature and delta t so to do that
so to have once I have ice cream that is liquid and it is zero uh, vapor fraction uh, in the other hand if I have one as vapor phase it is vapor and I will first add the pressure drop in the equipment in this case only for matter of verification I will consider it as zero but in real life it's never it's never will be zero okay but for calculation I need to consider uh, a pressure drop to so I need to add a pressure drop to ice pen high seas even though it is zero and now I will add the vapor fraction as one so I am vaporizing my nephta my night my light nephta and I will vaporize my heavy nephta and we can see some information here What we can see here, the first thing is that to, to, to vaporize the light nephta, we, the temperature is lower and that leads to less energy to be taken. And it is what we see here. We have a heat flow of 2.65 uh, E plus 006 and in the heavy nephta we have 2.20 28, 29. So it uh, tells us that we need less energy to heat it up and to vaporize the light nephta. And if we are talking about the use of the, the steam, I will use less steam because uh, we know that Q is equal mass uh, versus uh, plus the specific heat at pre, uh, constant pressure and the delta T and I will add this information to the process simulation in order that when I save this and someone wants to verify my process simulation I have notes informing uh, important things that I, I, I believe that interesting to people know and this is one of the objective of the class today is to show you how to add the notes to a process simulation and to do that we go in format and we click in insert when I do that I am able to add a note and it is very simple you don't have too much uh, options but let's add the Q equal m cp t and you can you can uh, edit the the size of this this geometry if you go to flow sheet modify click on size you have now options to edit that so I want to edit and I want to add this here so what we have here is that Q uh, is equal mcp delta t and once the cp of the the water is will be constant because I have a uh, fixed uh, I have set at my pressure and temperature so the CP is con constant for both cases and my delta T I will consider the same one because I choose it in choose I have chosen in the heat exchanger design so the only way to increase the heat is in, is increasing the mass flow of my steam and because of that 
once I increase the mass density, uh, I have the increase in the heat value of the component, and I have the increase in the in the air needed to to burn the same amount of components, and I have the increase in the mass flow of steam needed to vaporize the the light the heavy naphtha compared to the light naphtha. And so this is it guy guys the the live session today was not so was not so interesting but for but at least I have answered the question so I believe that I have the answer the question. And let's see how long it takes. It take, took it um, almost one hour. If you have any question, please let me know because it's almost time to get to sleep. In Brazil, is around uh, 11 p.m. and I need to, to get up uh, earlier to, to do some presentations tomorrow and it was very nice to have you here with me and if you have any question just let me know in the comments of this video or you can get in touch with me in my LinkedIn profile no problem and I encourage you to join my telegram channel in process because there I constantly sharing my experience in plan design. In, on Saturday, I will interview Kirit, and Kirit is from India, and we will talk about pump selection and operation. He is an expert in pumps. He is a representative of uh, Flowdyne, if I'm not wrong. I forget the company but he is a representative of a pump manufacturer and he will do a presentation to us related to pump selection and operation uh, taking as point of view the, pro the chemical process engineer. And in the, the, after the kirit, I will do a live session and it will be on October 26 with Aka Tweedy to talk about Aspen High C certification, how to get that, how, what you should study. And uh, Arka Tweedy is one a student of mine and he will be very happy to share that information with you. And every Wednesday, I will return to the internet to share a little bit what I know about chemical processing engineering plan design with you. And it is very, very nice when we have people uh, interacting. So this is it my friend. Thanks a lot and I'll see you soon in the next live session.